We've been talking about drip legs and their traps. This week we're gonna do a little build out at the drip leg. What piping do we need at the trap? What accessories and what are our options there for different types of traps? So here we've got a main steam line, let's say it's three inch. So we're gonna go ahead and use a full line size drip leg. And that's so that our condensate can't just skip over. It's gonna fall down in there. Um, the height of this drip leg typically is gonna be about 14 inches. That is for a manual, manually started up system. A manual startup on a system means when I shut the system down, I may go around and open these drain valves to remove, allow condensate to drain from the system. And as the system comes back up, uh, I will, when steam starts coming out, close those. Um, in an automatic system where we want to do it all without any operator intervention, we'll use a 28 inch drip leg. And that just gives us additional volume to accumulate condensate until we get the system pressure to push it through our trap. So anytime we install a drip leg, we want a drain at the bottom. And in many cases, we'll just have a drain and a, and a plug in it. But we can also pipe that down to the floor, ground level, um, to make it more useful. So when we come off the side of the drip leg for our trap, we want to be off the bottom so that we've got a pocket there for dirt uh, so it doesn't go directly into our trap. And the first thing we're going to have on that takeoff for our trap is a manual isolation valve. And that's so we can service, do what we need to with this system. Um, after that isolation valve, we want to have a strainer. Um, a strainer protects the trap from debris that comes in. And uh, some traps have strainers integrated. Um, if you're putting in a new drip leg, feel free to use that integrated strainer. If there's an existing strainer, I'm never gonna take that out regardless of what type trap I'm putting in. Then we're gonna have our trap itself. And this is just a generic icon for a trap. On the outlet of the trap, we're gonna have a check valve. And the benefit of a check valve on the outlet of a trap is when the system's shutting down, um, there's no way for the vacuum in the steam system to suck condensate back into the header. So it's just there to make sure everything only goes in the correct direction. We're generally going to have a union so that we can disassemble this as needed. And then we'll have another isolation valve. Now every plant's got different rules. Um, we may not be able to blow down this strainer trusting that that valve works by removing the plug. So it's not a bad idea to put a valve on the outlet of the strainer. That way we can open that valve and not have to worry about um, this valve holding completely. We can verify that it is if needed. This is a good example of the minimum near trap piping. There's always accessories, things that we can add to this, but this is a good example what to look for on your checklist in the field.